Well, good Friday morning to you folks. Hopefully you had a good night's rest and uh, you are feeling well today. Hopefully you're ready to face today. This is September the 30th, the last day of September. It seems like this year has just flown by. Um, people always told me the older you get, the faster it goes, and, and uh, they weren't lying, that's for sure. September the 30th. I'm going to read to you from a revival today. September 30th, 1770. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That's Philippians 1.21. George Whitfield's body was slowing down, but his spirit was still energized by the thought of revival. He would be quoted as saying, I would rather wear out than rust out. Whitfield passed away from his poor health the morning after preaching his last sermon. His desire was to be buried beneath his pulpit in the old South Presbyterian Church in Newbury, Port, Massachusetts. George Whitfield's legacy would continue as a powerful evangelist. Dr. James Hamilton described his ministry. When it is realized that his voice could be heard by 20,000 and that ringing all over England as well as America, he would often preach three times on a working day in that he has received in one week as many as 10,000 letters from persons awakened by his sermons. If no estimate can be formed of the results of his ministry, some idea may be suggested of its vast extent and singular effectiveness. I'm just going to stop and say that is amazing. <laughs> as many as 10,000 letters a week from people saying uh, that they have been touched by him. Wow. Dr. Fred Barlow would mem memorialize his death on September 30th, 1770, just shy of his 56th birthday. George Whitfield, who preached for 34 years, crossed the Atlantic 13 times, preached more than 18,000 sermons, influenced one of the greatest revivals, died at Newburyport, Massachusetts, and is found suddenly exchanging his life of unparalleled labors for his eternal rest. Whitfield worked tirelessly for the cause of Christ, and after over 250 years after his death, we can still be thankful for his impact on the world. We do not advocate burning out or neglecting our Lord's clear commands, but most of us do not come near either one. <laughs> most of us don't burn out, and most of us don't even come close to the commands. And I would agree. Revival will not come to lukewarm churches or Christians. It will come to churches and Christians who are passionately in love with their Savior and making Him preeminent in their lives. There will be no revival meetings or evangelistic efforts in heaven. I must work the works of Him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. And that's John 9, 4. And those are the words of Christ. Today we must labor. Rest will come. Sure and soon. Wow. 56 years old. I'm getting ready to turn 55. Sometimes through a week I think of uh, the songs that I've sang in rest homes and in people's homes and here on this devotion every morning or the scripture that I've read. And uh, I think... I uh, wonder who that is reaching. I could not imagine in the day before all of this uh, electronics and all this stuff comes along, I could not imagine uh, receiving as much as 10,000 letters in one week by people letting you know that that you have helped them to come to the Lord. And dying at 56 years old, as his saying was, he would rather uh, wear out than rust out. <laughs> uh, well, we got work to do, that's for sure. No matter who we're, 
we're uh, uh, trying to please here, uh, we have to please God. And uh, just so uh, you know he's pleased with you, that's all that matters. So I wrote this song years ago. Didn't even write a date on it, but I know it was in uh, the uh, early 90s. <laughs> Don't even know what chord to do it in, so let's see here. In my walk with the Lord, I've had some hard times. But I've always held to the promise that He left for me. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And when I'm down, His nail-scarred hands are carrying me it's not what I had years ago that gets me through the problem that I have today but holding to you I know I can make it that's what I cling to when I kneel to pray Lord you are my light it seems I can't make it You are the one that I trust When all hope is gone Holding on to your hand I know I'll reach heaven And when I see your face I'll know that I'm it's not what I had years ago That will get me through the problems that I have today But holding to you, I know I can make it That's what I cling to when I kneel to pray Holding to you, I know I can make it That's what I cling to when I kneel to pray Lord, I'm thankful for men like the one we read about today who are willing to give everything they have to see lost people saved. God, I pray that you would light a fire within us. Lord, help us to understand that there are people around us every day, no doubt, that are lost that we need to witness to. And God, I pray that you will help us to do just that. We love you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, folks. Have a great day. See you Saturday.